This is a video tutorial on how to determine the hybridization of atoms in a molecule. So there are a few steps that we're going to lay out. The first one is draw your Lewis dot structure. The second will be to determine the steric number. And the third one will be using that steric number to figure out how many atomic orbitals you need because the number of atomic orbitals you need will then help you figure out which hybrid you're using. So let's take a look at an example. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. So over here we've been given the formula for formaldehyde. So the first thing we'll do is draw the Lewis dot, which would look like this, carbon double bonded to an oxygen, and the two hydrogens directly attached to it. The next thing we're going to do is look at the steric number. So for oxygen, it has a steric number of 3, 1, 2, and 3. And for carbon, it also has a steric number of 3, 1, 2, 3. And those are the three areas of electron density surrounding each of those atoms. I'm not worried about hydrogen's steric number, and that's because hydrogen cannot hybridize. When you're talking about electrons bonding, they use their valence shell. Hydrogen only has the 1s orbital in its valence shell, meaning there's no other orbitals for it to come and mix together to create something new. Carbon and oxygen, on the other hand, have the 2s and the 2p orbital. So the hybrid is made up of some combination of the 2s and the 2p orbitals put together. So let's look at how this will help us next. Okay, so now we've determined what the steric number is. So for carbon, we've determined it was 3, and for oxygen, it was 3 as well. That's telling us then that both oxygen and carbon need to combine individually three of their atomic orbitals to create the necessary hybrid that they will use to make all the bonds. So when we're trying to figure out what three atomic orbitals combine, we need to consider the valence shell for each of them. Because remember, it's the valence electrons that participate in bonding. So we have to figure out what are the valence shell electrons that carbon has. Those will be combined to make the hybrid. What are the valence shell electrons that oxygen has? Because those will be combined to make the hybrid. So let's take a look at how we'll work with that. Okay, so now our next task is to figure out which atomic orbitals can be used in order to create the hybrids. Remember, once again, it is based on the valence shell that we have. So if we look at the electron configuration for carbon and oxygen, we have these configurations. And these here represent the valence shell. So for both carbon and oxygen, our valence shell are 2s and 2p. Now a really important thing to keep in mind is that in the 2s shell, there's one orbital, and in the 2p shell, there are three orbitals. That means we have a total of four orbitals that we are able to combine. That doesn't mean you have to combine them all. You have up to four, but you can combine two or three or four, depending on the case that you have. So now, because the steric number for both carbon and oxygen in the formaldehyde was three, we're going to use three of the available orbitals that we have to create the hybrid. You are always going to use the S, and then you're going to need to use two Ps, and that will give you out the three that you need. So let's take a look at what that would look like. Okay, so we're at the very last phase of this. So we know that we have 2s and 2p orbitals available because that's the valence shell for both carbon and oxygen. The s has one orbital, the p's have three. Now because we have a steric number of three, we only need to combine three of the available orbitals. So we're going to always use the s, and then we're going to use two of the p's, which is why it's called an sp2 hybrid. Now we're going to get out three sp2s. However many atomic orbitals you throw in, that's how many hybrid orbitals you're going to get out. So I have three orbitals here, so I have three hybrids coming out as well. So we have three sp2 orbitals, plus, don't forget, we did have a third one and we didn't use it. So overall, for both oxygen and carbon, they're going to be sp2 hybridized with three hybrid orbitals and one unhybridized p. And that unhybridized will be used to make the pi bond.